उपस्थित मंच उपदिष्ट आज अनुषान मुख्य अतिथि जोह जिलार माननीय अतिरिक्त आरक्षी अधीक्षक श्रीजुत मिन्न मिन्मय गोस्वी डांगरिया मैं बक्तव्य रखे अनुरोध जान very good afternoon to our respected principal sir our chief guest hadayat ali da baidu and all the dignitaries on the dais our respected alumni members and my dear students i just like to express my feelings right now because after joining us addition as to joha i have come here for the last uh, i think four five times all for security reasons for the first time i am entering in this auditorium for an academic purpose for some other boxes and uh, it's feeling awesome uh, what i would like to say is that i am speechless right now what to say about your achievement at aita because it's a rare feat ami hokolwe janu je khuni thaku je mount everest to anake jay je 8800 something meters ha kintu it's not an easy thing it's not an easy thing aru ya karane bahut kini apuni sacrifice dibo lage hekini ami kono nai dekha aji ami ya ticket of ambordhana diya so we are felicitating him but he only know सेक्रिफाइस से लास्ट थार्टी इयर्स थार्टी टू इयर्स आज यही पाले की हेरवलिया त्याग करदाय बहे निश्चय के उपलब्धि कारण कि आम सको जीवन क्या ना क्या भाव पे आगे थको उल आर हेविंग साम शर्ट अफ गोल इन आवर लाइफ और मैं भाव सकोरे कारण गोलटे माउंट एवरेस्ट हो लगे दादा आज जीधरण माउंट एवरेस्ट तो स्केल पारि से सकते सम्भव नल आर स्पेसियल सकोबूर स्पेसियल है सकुए बेलेग बेलेगर निजर निजर फिल्ड जो निजर निजर एक माउंट एवरेस्ट हिसाब से धरी लय बांधि लय आरोहण सक्षम है मैं भाव समाज उन्नत हम पार बड़ बेसि दीघलिया निचार आज मुहूर्त मैं भाव एक स्मरणीय मुहूर्त रिमार्केबल डे फर जोहट इंजिनियरिंग कलेज एंड नट ओनलि जोहट इंजिनियरिंग कलेज बट फर आसाम एज ए होल इंडिया एज ए होल एंड थैंक यू ऑल फर इनवैटिंग अस टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस रिमार्केबल डे इट्स ए हिस्टोरिकल डे इन द हिस्ट्री अफ आसाम एंड आई थिंक and i feel that uh, his name will be written in golden letters in the history of assam so i once again uh, would like to wish him all the best adaida but i don't know what he has to achieve after this because after scaling mount everest i don't think there is any other uh, such thing which he has to conquer in life so all the best dara mukhalo pa iman kine dhanyabad joy aapan joy श्रीजुर मिन्मय गोस्वी डांगर लो धन्यवाद ज्ञापन करुषान मुख्य आकर्षण हेदायत आलि तक बक्तव्य प्रदान मैं अनुरोध जान ये मैं कह आज अनुषान शेष छात्र छात्री तखेर सदायत आलिर सतरंग आलाप कर तर आगते आम कईटाम अनुषान आसकटा शेष कर लम इतना मैं हेदायत आलि बक्तव्य रखे अनुरोध जान
আমার এলিমিনেশনের দাদা হল আর মূল সৌভাগ্য আমার যাত জেলার এডিশনাল এসপি ডাঙরিয়া and at the same time i am also getting nervous here uh just little bit of myself now about 51 years old father of a three children 19 years old boy second is 17 years and one girl um uh, 11 years uh the dream of everest actually came in my about 36 years back uh, i was that time at high school uh, Sony School Golpara. Uh, actually, I went for a tracking, one of the NCC camp tracking uh, in Sikkim. Uh, I was 15 years old at grade 9, and that tracking was for about 3 weeks. Uh, that's the first time when I saw the Himalaya, and after doing tracking for 3 weeks, uh, actually it became a kind of a dream for me. Uh, I was thinking in that time, if I able to do, I'll come back one day to the Himalayas. And I was before that I was reading a lot of uh, this become a dream. Uh, fast forward forward in the life after school I came to the JAC. I joined here in 1999, passed out in 1994. So about, I have worked about three years here. Then after that, uh, like every engineer here in that time, uh, computer science was new. Uh, we were very excited and always want to work in some of the latest technology and latest company, uh, company of the world. And I was fortunate, I was able to uh, go to US to the Silicon Valley and for last about 21 years I'm working here as a software engineer. Uh, my daughter born in 2010 and from 2011 and 12 I, I, I start getting more time. So last 10 years from 2000, uh, 2000 to 2010 uh, having a three kids and it was very scheduled, a very busy schedule along with the work. Uh, 10 years just gone like a, uh, like a, I'll say like, like a few days. And when 2012, uh, uh, that's the time when I really start thinking about my dream. Uh, I was thinking uh, where my dream has gone, uh, is there a way I can achieve my dream? So when first time in 2012 I was thinking about Everest, I was 42 years old. Uh, first, first thing came into mind, I, uh, I think myself is a crazy uh, and I think I actually laughed at myself uh, at 42. Uh, actually, uh, I was dreaming to climb Everest. Uh, prime time for climbing Everest is like uh, if you are 20 to 30 is the prime time. And that's the your youth and that's where like the best time to climb the Everest. But at the same time, uh, another thought came to me. Uh, that thought was like, uh, this is my dream, uh, am I going to just quit even without giving a try? So that was initial my thought. I never thought like I was really going to one day stand at the top of the world. But my initial try was, I'm not going to give up, I'm going to give a try, at least try to fulfill my dream. So that was my initial thought. So first thing what I did is like for about five years, uh, I try to improve my physical fitness. So that's the like kind of a uh, foundation I was trying to build. Uh, build. At the same time, uh, actually I was reading a lot of books, a lot of books, biography, motivational book. Uh, what was try, what I was trying to find out is uh, what kind of character I need to develop, what kind of process I need to follow. Uh, follow. Uh, that's what I was trying to understand. 
and trying to implement. So after reading a lot of books, uh, two things I understood. Uh, one is like for any long goal in the life, it may be academic goal, it may be anything. Uh, anything, maybe your extracurricular regular activity, maybe your relationship with another person. Uh, for any difficult goal, uh, there is no shortcut for it. So that's the first thing I have understood. Uh, understanding that uh, I was able to able to have a peace of mind and able to have a patience, uh, patience for my goal. So that's why it took me almost like five years to just get my physical fitness done. And and the second thing what I learned is like when you try to achieve a big goal, uh, it's really difficult if you keep on thinking the ultimate goal, uh, it's really difficult to achieve any goal because your final goal may be very big, uh, it's may be very difficult to go down for a few, few days and come back, uh, come back to the expedition again and continue my expedition. So I came back, uh, came back from base camp to below so that I can recover well. Uh, but uh, that's when the another lesson I learned. So I was little impatient, like I was thinking, I was in below base camp, but I was just thinking like, uh, I was in becoming impatient, though I was not fully recovered, I was impatient, I was trying to go back again. So that impatient, uh, I, I did not fully recover, but I rushed to the base camp again and tried to go up. But Time has come at the top. Uh, I went to the half of like one of the camp. I'll show you later where I, I went last time. Then I realized maybe I'm pushing too hard. Uh, too hard. I'm putting actually not too hard. I'm pushing myself to a dangerous step along with me. I'm also becoming a danger for the other teammate because anything happened, rescue, somebody has to rescue, put their effort. So at that time, I decided to actually come back for a few days and thought of like if I feel good, I'll come go, go back again. But I came back uh, to the base camp, uh, my health was deteriorated. Then ultimately I also had the same health with my another, other colleagues. So one day they called a the helicopter, take my all the luggage and put in a helicopter, flew into the Kathmandu and ambulance was waiting there. So from the helicopter they took me to directly to the hospital. So. I was there for about a uh, week, uh, then I recovered, then I came back to the home with broken heart and broken uh, my health. So I was very disappointed that time and uh, luckily with care of my wife and my kids, I was able to recover physically very quick, within a one month I recovered, but it was the mental agony, that disappointment, I was not able to recover for about two months. Uh, uh, the two months has gone, then one day I was thinking like uh, maybe I was like putting myself little drama drama with this occasion and I, I was thinking myself uh, what is the point of putting drama, there's two, two ways, either you quit, that's enough, then move on life. The second option was plane of 30 minutes flight, so you come to the Lukla and from there you track for about 10 8 days. So that's the tracking phase. You come in the loop in the morning, then after breakfast, you start your tracking. And it take about 8 days to get in the base camp. So that's the first phase of the Everest, tracking phase. Uh, after that, we call it rotation. Uh, rotation above base camp, above Everest base camp, there are four different things on top of the Everest base camp. Uh, rotation is is the is the process of adjusting height and get a thumb from called uh, acclimatization. Uh, so when you go to any high altitude, the density of oxygen is less. So at the top of the average, the percentage of oxygen is about uh, 20 25 percent, at the base came about 50 percent. But above, as you move up, your oxygen level goes down. So usually, whenever you go to the, any high altitude. Uh, first thing that happen is you become too tired. Um, the energy you to, uh, take to go to one step in uh, here, uh, it may take you like maybe five five times energy to just uh, put a one step in there. And you'll get a lot of headaches, loss of appetite, sometimes vomiting also. That's because of lack of oxygen. 
Uh, part of the Everest climbing, uh, you spend a lot of time adjusting your body to um, your low oxygen. Uh, that process is called climatization. The way you do the process is like you go high, uh, touch down high, then you sleep low. The meaning is that like when you go high to a certain height, our brain understands that there is a low oxygen and um, brain, brains give a signal that you have to survive on that environment and it immediately send a signal to our body to produce more red blood cell. Red blood cell is the one that carries the oxygen. So when it produces more uh, red blood cell in the blood, that means carrying, the carrying capacity of oxygen is more. The, the, the percentage of less oxygen you have, it was uh, make up by the additional that red blood cell produced in the body. So the process is Hat, so I ate a little bit of and I immediately went to the my tent and and I was trying to sleep and trying to take out my food. Uh, I was so tired I kind of collapsed and I was not even having energy to just take out my food. So then I thought like I'm not able to do it. I was just sleeping but that was in, in my mind. So after two hours I give another try. Then another try after four try and morning 4 a.m. I was able to take out the food and by that time uh, I was able to, uh, it's already like kind of morning breakfast will be ready around 6 o'clock so I slept for another 2 hours and took a breakfast came down another 10 hours to the base camp so when I put the food in the base camp uh, then only I feel that okay uh, the journey is over I was able to come down I really thank God for uh, that I am able to come down with safely without any injuries and this thing and I'll ultimately uh, from this camp Kathmandu after Kathmandu here. Uh, along this journey uh, I want to convey a message to all our brothers and sisters. Uh, what I learned is like um, in life, uh, I think you, you should have some uh, dream. Uh, dream in, in the sense like uh, that dream is it's not a, uh, it can be anything. Maybe on your career, you want to really want to become, uh, become, you have some career goal, you want to really become that person or that career or maybe some extracurricular activity or it may be on a relationship also, same thing. But uh, first thing is I think, uh, what my suggestion will be uh, will be always have some kind of dream, and this dream does not uh, does not unfold into reality. Uh, you need to really passionate for it, uh, really work hard for it. Uh, one day you will see like uh, God has given you that that the dream that you have, right? It will unfold, unfold, uh, unfold into reality. Uh, only thing you need to have a patience for it and work for it. So that's uh, that's what my learning about this whole journey. Uh, uh, do you want me to project my some of the photos and yes, yes. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, okay. Uh, those are some of my like uh, uh, photos and videos. Uh, I want to present those so that you can uh, whatever I said is sometimes difficult to really uh, think about uh, what exactly those camps are and how the situation is. Uh, so those are some of the pictures and videos. Uh, so this is basically the route of the uh, trekking route that I was telling you. So this is the first is the flight we take. Then from there you 
ট্র্যাক ফরে ডেস গেট ইন দা এফোর্ট আ দিস ইজ দা ম্যাপ অফ ম্যাপ অফ অল দা ক্যাম্পস দোজ ক্যাম্পস আর ফ্রম বেস ক্যাম্প টু দা অল দা ওয়েটার টপ সো ইউ ক্যান সি লাইক ফ্রম বয়েজ ফর ক্যাম্প ওয়ান ক্যাম্প টু এন্ড অল দা ওয়েট দা সামিট অফ দা ক্যাম্পস দ্যাট সামিট ইজ এ ইটস এ পিরামিড শেপ ইজ এ ভেরি স্টিপ স্লোপ uh this is the where you can see it like uh this is the slope you can you need to really climb uh that's uh, you can see one of the climbers where some dog uh this where you need to really go and all the way you go to the top and that's the hilly step uh you can see where the hilly step is there uh these are the some photos of uh trekking so i started from the san francisco Uh, I get in uh, Kathmandu here, landing in uh, Kathmandu, uh, welcome my company. Uh, this is the second flight I am taking to the Lukla. Uh, inside the flight, it's a small plane. Uh, actually, this is the flight uh, where you will first see the Himalaya lens. It's a very beautiful lens, I could not capture in the photo properly. Uh, I landed in the Lukla. Uh, this is the airport I was talking about. If you Google it, you will find a lot of videos about the Lukla airport. and this is some of the team member uh, one of the team member uh, this is the another team member from india and this is the another lady actually only one lady uh, only one member from the ukraine uh, this is the first uh, first day we are in a loss uh, this is we are tracking our uh, up so if you see in the picture, you get in the camp one uh, some of the photos of camp one Uh, camp one is built on uh, top of a ice block. So once you leave the base camp, uh, you are just living uh, living top of the ice. So this is one of my this is actually my uh, my camp. Uh, the weather here uh, it changes like uh, within uh, within five minutes. Uh, sometimes it's sunny and immediately it will it will snowfall and it's very unpredictable weather. Uh, there are many 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 things so all the tents you can see it's become a, like a small kind of city like tent city <laughs> this is a camp one and this is our dining tent uh, this is inside the cooking tent so the surface uh, usually they melt the water then sometimes they cook uh, some uh, food also uh, like soup but interesting this is our dining uh, dining tent so you can see how we make the dining dining table so this is basically like cut the ice and make a uh, block like a table set so that you can see then your leg is warm it's a comfortable uh taking some soup in camp one Uh, this is some of the surplus and team member. Now at camp 2. This is the camp 2. Uh, I was uh, 6,800. Very cold. Usually helicopter can go up to camp too. Uh, if you are sick, uh, sick and the weather is good, uh, you are lucky. Helicopter can come and rescue you. <laughs> Actually, one of my team members got sick. Uh, we need to call the helicopter and he was lifted to the apartment. Uh, this is another thing like a um, So it looks beautiful but very hard to live, uh, very cold and because of height it's difficult to sleep. Uh, same, same 
ความสุขFinally, 
Thank you very much. I always want to give the parents and talk about the world. Uh, actually, every expedition I go, other people so I always take a gamosa and try to, if it is possible, not all the peaks you can tie something, but average you can really tie and lift, lift that one. So those are different Buddhist pair flag. So I tie the gamosa. Hopefully it is there forever. Usually don't, don't, don't be indicated in that way. Uh, I want to show one thing here, maybe you can see the weather car, sorry. Uh, it's so cold, like it's about minus 30 to 40 degree, right? Usually our freeze, freezer are like minus 1 or 2 degree. Uh, my bed, that moisture come out, right? It become like a stone here. Uh, this is just, uh, I'm taking rest just before it's starting. So this is the summit and this is the rope, it's going all the way top. Uh, this side is the Tibet. Approaching to the top, so there is a line like you go one by one at the time. Uh, so this is I want to show like a Nepal government appreciated like a being leader a member of like about 14 people, uh, 14 team members. And I need to thank God like out of 14 in the past, past batch, uh, 11 we went together and 11 of them able to submit and able to come back uh, safely. And three actually got sick, uh, they will, uh, I think they will start a submit sometime in this week. Uh, this is one of the, the Hillary step I was talking about. Uh, this is the Hillary step. Uh, you can see a lot of climb, climbers going up. And uh, actually, it's one rope. People come up and down. It takes a lot of time here. Uh, it's like a complex, so like a lot of rocks are there. So you need to navigate through ice and rock. Uh, I, I think I'm very much done here. Uh, a lot of thanks to all the NGO committee, uh, their appreciation, their interest in my uh, adventure. And again, I'm proud to be a part of the JEC. I'm really lucky. I consider myself as a lucky. And I think uh, any question we can take. Right? Um, Please, Jurhat, and other dignitaries. Students, faculties, and the alumni alumni present here. So, our the main the center key persons had Ali, our students passed out in 94, 1994. I congratulate on behalf of all the faculties of JEC, all the students, and on behalf of also the alumni of JEC and the staffs. Really, it is a great task. After, it is a great adventure, we can say, for Hadayat. But for this adventure, he has to take a lot of risks, a lot of determination he has. After a lot of weeks, a lot of determination, he has finally achieved the peak of mountain Everest in a, a day of 12th May at 7.30 a.m. 2022. Really, again, I am thankful. My, our best wishes 
on behalf of all the faculty, staffs, and alumni, we are offering our best wishes to Habib for his achievements. I congratulate, and I think, I hope, his this type of success will finally give the inspiration to our students, our young persons, to the, all the citizens or the young faculty members of